So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again, and I am super stoked. This is part two of a 75 gallon addition that I have uh, incorporated into my 210 gallon system to get my two eels that I had in this aquarium. I was getting a massive red bubble algae bloom and I couldn't put anything in to eliminate it because the eels would try and eat whatever I put in here to eliminate it. So they're moved out now and uh, this Fiji fox face uh, has been in here for about a month and a half and he has completely annihilated the red bubble algae bloom I had. There is still a little green left, it's right there. Uh, and up on that rock there's a little bit. Uh, but he hopefully will work on that after he's finished with the red. I'm gonna show you some before pictures so you can see how bad the red bubble algae bloom if you haven't been following my channel. And then we're going to be doing the stand build for the 75 gallon that I have added. Uh, going over how I waterproof my stands because that has come in super handy for me a couple times. And also cutting some glass aquarium lids to make them fit my 75. He's actually going at some of that stuff right now if you see it. So if you're interested, let's get to it. So what's going on guys? Yeah, my dance Saltwater Junkie here again. And I'm actually pretty excited for this video because I'm going to be starting up another aquarium. Uh, I've got my two eels in here with my corals, and because of the intense lighting, I'm getting this massive bubble algae bloom. You can see it right there, all over that rock. Uh, I've actually had some of it grow up on my zoanthids. Uh, so I've got to get rid of this stuff, and I can't put any fish in that will eliminate it, uh, because the eels will attack them. So at the end of the first video, guys, I mentioned doing something wrong with the overflow that I built. I'm going to show you what that is real quick. When I originally made this overflow, I intended on having the water overflow the top here. Now that would have put my water volume right around this area here. Well, my return is drilled separate from the overflow. So if I would have lost power, it would have siphoned all the way down to this point. So I would have had that much water volume that had to drain off in my final sump. My final sump is really tight as far as water volume goes because I'm basically draining off six aquariums into that final sump. So what I did to correct the problem is I drilled a bunch of holes in my overflow. That lowered the water volume down to here. And now I'm only going to lose about that much water volume if, power, if I lose power. Whereas if I would have left it the way it was, I would have lost that much water volume and I would have overflowed my final sump. For those of you guys who haven't watched any of my videos, I waterproof the bottom of my stands. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right here. Laid out some vinyl and just used a razor knife to cut around this. I'm going to go ahead and glue the vinyl to the board here. So I'm just using some of this contact cement. Put a layer on the piece of wood. I put a layer on the vinyl. You just barely wait for it to start getting a little tacky and then we'll place it on there. So I flipped it over and just put some stuff that was kind of heavy on it. My vinyl came out really nice sitting on the uh, floor with some weight on it overnight. And uh, keep in mind that I am uh, just trying to use stuff I have. I got a bunch of miscellaneous wood, so I'm just using what I got for this stand. Um, so I put the two pieces of backing. I did not have enough for a full piece because it does have to be 49 inches wide. Uh, so I split two different pieces and then I'm going to put this quarter inch uh, nice finished wood over that. And I'm just going to glue that and put a bunch of brad nails in there. So I added uh, some corner braces here. These are like a, basically a two by three. Threw some tack nails in just to hold it and then I went ahead and added three screws. And I also put a screw from the bottom, lag screw, about two and a half inches into the bottom as well. So I added a top cross member as well. And same thing. I actually pre-drilled this with a three ace drill bit and countersunk it in about halfway and then drilled it and put about a three inch lag screw in here and then I added four screws across the top I'm just taking a smaller drill bit and drilling through the rest of the way so I installed the upper cross member anchored that down into the two by fours then I went ahead and ran some 2x6, and this again, this is overkill, but it's what I had. Uh, side cross members here and anchored it with three 3-inch three lag screws each way. 
top and bottom on both sides. Uh, this side has to be left open so I can run my plumbing for my refugium. So I'm going to leave that side open. This side is actually going to show, so I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of plywood on this side so that kind of covers the tank. Just glued and brad nailed it in. Same thing with this front. Now this front is to hold back that water in case I ever get a leak in the refugium. All right guys, well, I put all that front trim on and then me being stupid, uh, I decided to put an extra cross brace in and I didn't decide to do this until after I put the front trim on. So I'm gonna have to cock those over and uh, so hopefully they're not that visible when I paint it. But this is just a paint to get this thing up and going. Uh, I plan on putting some type of a real nice looking cabinetry or uh, maybe a pallet, uh, rustic look to it. Since I made this stand so high, it's got a little bit of a unstableness to it. Uh, that's just a lot of weight up that high. Uh, just to make me feel a little better about it, I anchored this 2x4, went into a stud. I drilled the holes down to about here and then used a long uh, Phillips extension. I ran 3 inch drywall screws, two of them, into this. So this is stout. Now we're going to push this up against here and I'm going to run a screw from the stand into this 2x4. So this is why I love density finders for finding studs. I don't know exactly where that 2x4 is behind here. I mean, I could have measured it out, but check this out. Push a button. So if I go underneath the 2x4, I don't get anything. So now, that stand is not moving at all. So that worked out really well. So I finished waterproofing my stand, guys. Uh, I used this PVC material. Uh, I've gotten it at Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh, it is corrugated, but that doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Uh, I've used it for lids on my aquariums. I've used it for all kinds of stuff. This is just a real cheap waterproof item you can get. And I just uh, basically cut those those pieces, what I needed, and uh, put it in here and then just used some tub and tile caulk and siliconed it in. And this has already saved me. Doing this to one of my other stands already saved me. I had about two inches of water. I had one of my drains get backed up on the 29s underneath my 210 and had, uh, I don't know, probably a good 10 gallons of water drain under that stand. And my flooring was completely protected. Uh, it stayed, it was about that deep. Uh, but I was able to suck it out with my shop back and didn't do any other damage whatsoever to anything. So. Uh, I really recommend waterproofing your stands if you make one. So I've got my glass cutter here, all right, and uh, I've got my wood all clamped down. I got to shave off this much uh, to make it fit that 75, and uh, we're gonna see how this goes. I've had some good luck doing this, and I've had some not so good luck. So we'll see what happens. I just got that straight edge on there, that, and you just kind of go back and forth on it. It. And it kind of creates a weak spot where the glass will snap. So I did not get as clean of a cut as I wanted. So I'm going to just try and run my belt sander on it and see what happens here. See if I can smooth it out a little bit. That actually flattened those sharp edges right off of there. I'm going to take this back a little bit and then just hand sand it. 
So this is the piece of glass I cut. Uh, ended up fitting really nice and those edges smoothed right off, came out really good. The eels really seem to be enjoying this tank with all the structures. So it came out really well. Hope you guys got some good information out of this video and hope to see you next time. Later.